Start transmission. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting to you live from the Static Clan compound, you are now listening to the Jason Static Experience, a podcast from an award winning nobody, noted raking tour, Renaissance man, a man with a sailor's mouth, but he has never sailed, and who likes to talk about a cornucopia of topics. This podcast is brought to you by www.jasonstatic.com, a place filled with all your pop culture, antiques, and collectible needs. Needs. And now your host, the one and only Jason Static. All right, just uh, give me one second. Welcome back, everybody. This is Jason Static with another episode of the Jason Static Experience. My friends, I have a very good episode today. I came across a couple of months back. I came across this lady, and this was a couple months back. Um, I believe it was maybe back in. It was last year sometime, I believe. There was an incident that happened where Governor Blackface Ralph Northam, he decided to get a little wild and, you know, push some pretty heinous, you know, uh, gun gun laws, wanting to push some. So, you know, typical red-blooded Americans rose up and descended down on his city and was just like, nah, bro, you ain't going to take our shit. No way, no how. And in that process, everybody knows I'm a very big proponent of the Second Amendment. And matter of fact, my how much I enjoy the Second Amendment, it goes further than what most people would would even allow. But we can get into that debate as 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 we start the conversation with this lady. Anyways, I made a video about it on YouTube. And in that video, I happened to use one of her pictures. And she found it. She's seen it, just like you do on social media. When you go to something like that, you search out and see if you can find yourself or people talking about you. Well, I found this girl. She hit me up on uh, YouTube, dropped me a link to her Facebook, and I've been kind of following her ever since. None other than Princess Quaveer. <laughs> Did I get that right? I probably <laughs> still said it wrong. Welcome to the show, Princess. How you doing? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing really good. What about you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Sorry if I butchered your name, even though you already told me it like four times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much used to it. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, just to start off, what got you, you? You gave me a kind of a little tidbit of it before we before we hit the start button. What got you onto your path of where you're at now for you know, the Second Amendment activist type stuff. What got you? What is your story? What brought you to that dance? Uh, well, what brought me was kind of an unfortunate situation, uh, but I was attacked um, in my city where I've lived more than 20 years. I've grown up here after immigrating here from Africa. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I got into this traffic incident. This woman, she physically attacked me. I subdued her pretty quickly. Uh, the police didn't do anything. Uh, the court system didn't do anything. And I felt really betrayed and frustrated with the process. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that was kind of my red pill moment and realizing that, you know, everybody tells you, oh, follow the rules and follow the law, listen to the cops. And that didn't uh, get me anywhere with that situation. Right. Um, so ever since then, I've just made activism very like a very important thing for myself. Um, I got, I was, I was 21 that happened. Um, a few months later, my birthday came up. I got my concealed handgun license the day, that day. I went and did the background check, mm-hmm. um, and I've had my license ever since to conceal carry. Um, um, and then there was another incident a few months, I think a few months later, maybe a year later, uh, where we were trying to pass a, a house bill here in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio, for the entire state. Right. Um, it was called House Bill 203 at the time, which was the Stand Your Ground uh, provision. And there was a group uh, that was on Facebook wanting to protest that bill. Mm-hmm. And I happened to come across their Facebook event. And it, they said that this bill would give a white guy permission to shoot a black kid running down the street towards the bus. Um, and mm-hmm. <laughs> and I thought that was really outlandish. Uh, because anytime I've been to the gun range, um, I was dating a white guy at the time. I'm black, but dating a white guy at the time. Anytime I go to the gun range with him, 
Um, and people saw, saw how proficient I was just shooting by myself because he would be shooting what he wanted and I would be loading my own stuff. People would always come up to me and say, wow, you're really good. You're great. You look really confident. Most women aren't as confident as you. So I've always had great experiences with gun owners. Mm. And that statement really frustrated, frustrated me and really made me feel offended. And I'm not easily offend, like, offendable. So right. that's kind of funny. Uh, so I decided to organize a protest to their protest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I didn't know anybody in the gun world really uh, here in Ohio. So I made a post. I was trying to contact biker bars and I was trying to think of places where I knew gun owners would possibly be. Right. Um, and somehow my, you know, my event got out to some people. They showed up and it was about tw- it was almost 20 people that showed up, actually. But this is right. less than a week notice. Right. They showed up um, and we had a great time. And ever since then, I've been more and more involved. I go to the state house and try to get legislation passed and and provide testimony and things like that. How long ago? How long ago was that? Oh, wow. Um, it's been almost 10 years. Wow. Wow. So so you, yeah. that's that's yeah, I didn't know that. So you've actually been you, you've actually been deep in the game for a while. Yeah. Wow. OK. Wow. Hell, man. You, you, shit, <laughs> I didn't. Man, I didn't even think about that, you know, because a lot of people just like, you know, they see something and and it's just like, that's it, you know, and and it's it's been ramped up, you know, about, you know, you know, you know, protesting and, you know, activism. And it's something that's been heightened over the last, you know, you know, four, four or five years, you know, it's really been hot, you know, like there's activists and, you know, protesting for literally everything that you could think of. As you know, I mean, we're, we we kind of have that stuff going on right now uh, yeah. over some issues, and uh, we can talk about that if you want to too. Um, but yeah, man, that was just that's crazy. I didn't think it, you know, because like I said, most people are just you know, and most people don't stick with it because you know it's a hard thing to do, especially especially battling you know against against you know government institutions because. I mean, if you follow my if you follow my Facebook or any anything that I say on social media, you know, like I'm cool with the government for the most part. You know, I could I can get along with it, but there's a lot of things that I just don't agree with, you know, that they do, you know, like, you know, like one thing that I didn't really care that Trump did that Trump did is, you know, the the bump stock ban. Yeah. As 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 something as small and minuscule as the bump stock ban, like, you know, you could use it or you could not use it, but it, it's, it's a tool to use for a weapon. So therefore I don't want it touched, you know? So it's always things like that with me that get me really very leery about, you know, politicians in, in government in general. So yeah, when I they, completely agree. Yeah. It, it's just things like that, you know, it's just, you know, like I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm pretty when I said in the beginning where, you know, I'm very hardcore when I come, when it comes to, you know, uh, gun rights, I believe that every man, every woman should be able to own it if they want to own it, but they should also be able to own, you know, you know, like back in the old days, you know, back in the old days, people had, you know, you know, artillery type stuff. If you wanted to own it, you don't have to own it, but if you wanted to, you know, like if you wanted to own a cannon of some sort, you can own that cannon. You know, if you wanted to own a machine gun, you can own that machine gun. But now they, they're like, no, we've got to limit you Americans for that because we don't want you to have that same artillery as, as what we have, you know, and they've all been, you know, presidents, you know, over the last, you know, hundred plus years uh, have all pushed that type of essentially, in my opinion, garbage, you know, like now nah, you don't get to have that. You don't get to have that, but we can have it and we can bring it down on you if, if, if we want to do it. And this is like, nah, bro. So I, I, that's where I said my, 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 my opinion of the second amendment is I think we should have, you know, obviously there's some where I won't go. You know, I, I don't think people should be able to have like nuclear bombs or anything like that, <laughs> you know, but if you want to have, you know, a little bit of a he- more heavy artillery, you know, whether it be, you know, automatic machine guns and stuff like that. And, you know, cannons and whatnot. And, 
black powder type stuff. And if you want to have that stuff, go ahead, have it. If you can afford it and you can buy it, I think people should be able to own it if they want to. <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, you sound like a libertarian. I, I consider myself pretty, a libertarian. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. So I'm the same. I'm way. even wishy washy on them sometimes because some of those guys are goofballs too. <laughs> so I just kind of I kind of weave in and out of you know where you know like I said you know like I, I kind of just weave in and out of places you know like you know I, I was a conservative at one time you know mm-hmm. in my in my mid in my 20s um, I'm pushing 40 now I'm 38. And, um, in my younger day, in my younger, you know, teens and early twenties, you know, I was a little bit more on the, a little bit more on the liberal side, still, you know, kind of like left, to, left to center, you know? And, um, so I've weaved in and out of all of the, the areas, you know, a lot of my family is, you know, more staunchly conservative. Uh, I got a lot of friends that are really staunch conservatives. Um, hell, I even got a lot of friends that are freaking weirdo socialist, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think one of the good things that we good thing, you know, I don't line up with a, a lot of people politically. I think it's good to have differences of views. And I, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day and I was just like, one of the things that we need to be able to find is commonalities between all of the areas, because then that's where we can build bridges to each other. Yes, you know? you're absolutely right. And I think one of those fundamentals, which, in, in the video that I did that you've seen it, there was a bridge there that I seen, but all the mainstream media was just like, nah, the, this is a bunch of racist. This is a bunch of, you know, Nazis and everything like that. And it was just like, I, and I'm sitting here watching these live streams and I'm like, well, you know, there's, there's a, there, there, you know, there's a Mexican person and there's a black person and, you know, Hey, Hey, right there. There's a, there's an interview with, you know, black Panthers. And it was just like, what? Like, just just stop doing this. Like, and I think that's a commonality that a lot of people have is is the the ability to own guns and protect ourselves because from a tyrannical government, essentially. Because you know yeah. they're they're pushing way crazy shit right now. Oh yeah, uh, constantly. Really, um, yeah. if you don't pay attention, they slip things in bills all the time, and they're always trying to find ways of circumventing your rights and. If you really don't pay attention before you know it, your rights are gone. And you're going to say to yourself, how did we become like California? And it's really sad to me that a lot of the New England states are as liberal as they are. I'm just yeah. like, you guys are the original. You guys were the original states for yeah. freedom. How did you guys become so comfortable allowing all the laws to pass that have passed in your state? Yeah. What are some of the, what are some of the, uh, some of the stuff that you've helped tried to get an act, you know, push back against you know uh you said that you've been in the game for 10 years doing this so um tell tell the people of some of the stuff that you've actually tried to help block and or help you know get past um primarily the two that i think we've focused on the most are um like one recently i i haven't been able to go to a lot of stuff lately because i'm still working um i know a lot of people are off right now and i'm like why is all of these rallies happening when i can't go um but it's fine um so uh, i think we just removed the um in so in ohio when you have a concealed handgun license you have a duty to notify the police officer Mm -hmm. um you can be cited for that they can pull your license for that if you don't let them know and they can ticket you for it which right. I think is a little bit ridiculous because when they run your license plate, they can see that you are somebody who owns a vehicle has their license. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually I, I kind of sort of ran into somebody online a few months ago who got in trouble for that. Mm-hmm. Um, he said that the officer didn't give him time to talk about it. And now it's his word against the officer's word. And I don't think that's, that should be an option for them to be able to take his license. So that's right. something I think that just got re- that just got passed, and I think it needs to be voted on now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there we have, of course, Scan Your Ground that we've been working on for almost ten years now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another thing, uh, we have a group called Ohio Gun Owners. Um, this guy named Chris Dore moved here from out of state, and he started that group, and he has really been a trailblazer, gotten mm-hmm. you know bringing a lot of attention to um, our gun rights issues. Um, they had a representative introduce um, constitutional carry, and that was moving through the legislature. So we're trying to get one 
of those two things pass or both of those things pass so we can get them voted on. Um, it's just, it's just a lot of hard work. It's a lot of phone calls. I don't usually make the phone calls because I go in person. I really right. should. Um, right. or at least the emails because Chris has been great with that too. Um, he has templates that he's like here. And then there's a tool that you can use so you can find who your representative is and send them emails and use the right. template that he's written up if you want to. Um, there's another group that I also work with is Ohioans for concealed carry OFCC. Mm -hmm. Um, Chuck LaRosa was actually the guy that I met from that group during my first rally that I hosted. Um, right. And he's actually the reason I kind of got into all this legislative stuff. I did not know that we were able to really be this involved. If, if I hadn't met him that day, you know, I'd be kind of doing what everyone else does and just complaining on the internet. Right. Yeah. I'm one of those guys, you know, I, I complain, on the internet. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but I think, I think all, all facets of it is, is a good idea to do, you know, like, if you have somebody that has a very loud voice and while I have a very small footprint in the war, in the realm of social media, you know, like I don't have millions and millions of followers or anything like that, but I, I feel like I'm a person, I have a very loud voice, you know, just because I'm so boisterous in it, you know, like, and I, I just say, I, I have a, I just want to say what I want to say and, and I don't care what anybody else thinks about it, you know? So I think somebody like <laughs> I think somebody like me is is made for being able to try to reach as many people as I can with my voice. But somebody like you that who's more on the, you know, in person type thing, mm -hmm. you know, you know, running the legislation type stuff, you know, trying to work that stuff. I think I think all of that works together with each other. And, you know, somebody like me, I could be like, you know, with my platform that I have. I'm just like, hey, you know, check this person out. And then you come in like like you are, you know, and you're talking about all the stuff that you're doing. You you mentioned something a second ago about consti constitutional carry. For those who don't know what that is, can you elaborate on on some of those more intricate things that you said about, you know, like constitutional constitutional carry and, and, and some of those other things? Um, so constitutional carry would mean that you would not need to – go to the state and get permission to be able to conceal your weapon mm -hmm. any longer. That just means that the state would recognize pretty much the second an amendment, the way it is supposed to be. Right. Uh, we shouldn't be having to ask permission to be able to put a piece of fabric over our pistol. Um, and now even a lot of grocery stores are getting involved in the whole gun topic, which mm -hmm. I think they should not be talking about it at all. It's none of their business. Really. I'm there to spend my money in your establishment as a consumer and you are right. an essential business, you know, you've deemed yourself as such by being such an integral part of our infrastructure of the country. You mm -hmm. supply food and products that I need. You should have no business telling me if I should be able to conceal carry or open carry in your store. Um, and then there's the whole, you know, private business, public business thing, but that's not the point that I'm making. Right. The point is that I'm not doing anything to you. I, I still need to be able to protect myself wherever I'm going. Right. Um, and I think that a lot of the federal laws need to be changed too. Um, especially like when you're going to the post office, I think it's ridiculous. You can't even be in the parking lot of a post office with your gun. That's a federal crime. I think that's like, what? So like if I, I can't even come drop off an envelope in the mailbox, this is just crazy. Mm. Um, so, you know, back again to the being libertarian and being pro freedom, um, I would say most people are inherently good people. They don't want to hurt their fellow man. Um, right. You know, we're not we're not in a type of country where murdering each other. I, I know we have high murder rates, but I just mean compared to other places of the world, um, we're not just like running around shooting each other all day. Right. Uh, I think that's a big. I think that's a big misconception of uh, American American culture from people outside of American culture. You know, they, they think we're just, you know, it's, it's the wild west around here. I mean, sometimes it is, but you know, kind of <laughs> kind of like what we're, we're going through right now. It's kind of like a wild west scenario, but yes. for the most people, people just want to be left alone. Like they want to be able to protect themselves and they just want to be left alone. And I think, I think it's a silly, it's a, it's a silly notion that people shouldn't be able to protect themselves, whether they're white, black, pink, yellow, green, gay, straight, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's. It's, it's to me that's the one essential liberty that everybody has and then everybody's equal to 
is to be able to have the ability to protect yourself and not have the government protect you, but for you to protect yourself. Because yeah. I mean, let's be real. The government can't really protect us. No. <laughs> and and that really should be your secondary or that should really be your tertiary, um, the low level of protection anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, I always carry a pocket knife with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's for me, that's like my primary way of, you know, getting rid of you if I have to. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I'm def- and because I can't carry my pistol everywhere, um, especially where I work. So, um, then secondary, if I can, if I have my pistol, like I, I really don't want to try to use it if I don't have to. Because first of all, I don't want to kill somebody if I don't have to. I right. will if I need to, but I really don't want to. Right. Uh, because then the legal part of that is a whole mess. A whole um, and, other mess. Yes, and, and, and I really don't want to have to deal with that either. Because then the news puts your name out there. They start digging up things in your past that have nothing to do with the situation right um and then they try to make you look bad so that the people you know in the area will rally around what they say and the media is you know as maj Ture says i'm not sure if you know who he is yeah Yeah. so actually i got to meet him at cpac so it's pretty cool um as he says the media is the enemy of the people and Mm -hmm. you know the president says the same thing and he they're both absolutely right the media is the enemy of the people oh yeah i've 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 said that a lot on 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 the shows that i had like i told you you know i used to do live streams and um switching up the way that i do things now and i've i've said that millions of times over the course of all of the shows i've done about how, how the media and hell even now social media because you know you know, mm-hmm. social media is almost a bigger presence than, you know, uh, most news channels are. And I think they are. I think they are. Yeah. number. I would, in my opinion, I think they're number one now. Oh, yeah. Because I, when I watch other people's videos, like, uh, like Elijah Schaefer, mm-hmm. um, and I read through the comments, I see people saying that they get their news from Instagram and Facebook. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you're not getting your news from you know, the media source is interesting. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a good thing because, but it's also a bad thing because people mm-hmm. never look at full context. They don't have the attention span or they just choose not to go look for it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when people are constantly talking shit about the president, they're like, oh, he said this. I'm like, okay, well, where's the rest of the video? What's the context of the sentence? You took a 30 mm-hmm. second sentence out of what an hour conference and mm-hmm. you want me to believe that's the only thing he said, like that's bullshit. Yeah. Let's go find the actual video. Right. Um, just like the whole like good people on both sides comment that that irritates the shit out of me because yeah. literally the statement right after that he said I'm not talking about the white supremacists and I'm like if you go and watch the full conference and watch the 20 mm-hmm. second 20 minute section of that video you will clearly see that right um and people just don't spend the time to go and look and I'm like well then please shut up you don't know yeah. what you're talking about right well it, it's kind of like here recently here recently we've had an incident you know the the you know the the murder of uh George Floyd and everything like that and one of the big things that the media did is they they cherry picked the when the looting starts the shooting starts mm-hmm. and and they they took that as you know they cherry picked that one little sentence that one little phrase that he said but they didn't look at the 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 entire picture of what he actually was saying and yeah. I, I've tried to tell people, I go, that wasn't a directive. Like it wasn't no. him going, Hey, everybody go out and shoot all these people. Like it wasn't right. that. And what I've tried to explain to people, you know, throughout social media, you know, cause I'm always, always out on social media trolling places. And, <laughs> and, and I told people, and I've told these people, I go, listen to the, I go, this is what it was. It was a warning to everybody because what happens in there's literally hundreds of thousands of cases over human history, you know, you could think back as far as time can be. Anytime there's been looting, rioting, upheaval, or anything like that, there's always been bloodshed, mm-hmm. shooting. Especially in in our day and age now, it's shooting. But you know, where I said, you know, in human history, you know, you got to think back to the olden days. You know, in, in the days of you know where we didn't have weapons, you know, m- you know, guns and stuff like that. You don't think that those people, when when people started upheaving upheaving against you know like kings and stuff, you don't think that those people got crazy and started shooting or you know started fighting with sticks and sticks and rocks, pitchforks and pitchforks and, and you know so, hanging people, burning people. Yeah so, at the, at the- yeah. so what I was saying is like 
it, it's literally a warning to people being like, hey, if you attack these people, if you attack these people and you go and destroy and burn and try to destroy their shit, you could potentially get yourself killed. Correct. And that's that's where the terminology of the looting starts, the shooting starts. That's the way I took it. And I was just like, I'm trying to tell these people and they just don't understand because they're like, well, you know, CNN and, you know, all of these other people said that he said this and he wants to kill people. And it's just like, that's not why that's not the way it was, bro. That's not the way yeah. it was. And, you know, that's really frustrating for me because I feel like those people are being purposely obtuse. Um mm-hmm. They, they don't want to just look at something the way it is. They want to add meaning to something. It's like, this is not your statement to add meaning to. Mm. If you read the statement, you have to read it the way it is. You can't say, oh, well, I feel like they meant this. No, you can't. Say, you're not psychic, okay? Yeah. This is not the X-Men. You can't read people's minds. Right. So get it together. Read what it says. Take it as it is. Mm. And then if the person wants to clarify, ask them for clarification. Right. Uh, that's a big issue people have. They don't know how to communicate anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and they always want to infer things. It's like, stop inferring your, cause your inference is, is incorrect. It's just wrong. Yeah. Now, uh, since, since we're kind of on the topic of, uh, of, of the whole situation that happened over the course of this week, i I feel it's kind I'm kind of obligated to, to, to ask about it. Um, what, what is your feelings on it? Cause you mentioned, you mentioned that you had an incident, you know, and it, it's what essentially brought you to here. You know, uh, you had an incident, you know, with police, um, that brought you to where you're at today. So, like I said, I feel like I'm almost obligated to ask you, what are some of your feelings on the whole situation as a whole? Like, how, how do you feel about, you know, like just, you know, essentially just how, how do you feel about it? Like uh, you, the situation it, is really sad. Yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the situation is just really sad. And, it only highlights uh, the things that I have been telling people for a long time is that uh, the police are overly aggressive with people mm-hmm. too often. And people, you know, I post the, you know, I, I follow groups like cop block and some of these other uh, groups that mm-hmm. where people post videos that they've taken of interactions with police. And I share these things on my Facebook and a lot of my friends that are currently protesting, um, especially my black friends, they yeah. never say anything. They never respond to the post. We never discuss it when we're in person. Um, they know that I do the activism. They never ask me about it. I've tried to invite people to come with me. Sometimes they're like, no, I don't want to. I'm nervous about it. They never show up. And um, then something like this happens because it's a black guy. Now they want to be involved. And that mm-hmm. really irritates me because right. you didn't give a fuck that all these other thousands of people had the same incident happen to them, whether they were white or black or mixed or whatever, you didn't care about them. Now it happened to this guy. Unfortunately, he passed away from it, Mm -hmm. but you guys didn't care. So I, so I don't care now that you care. I'm more, uh, okay, great. Your eyes are open a little bit, but what are you actually going to do after this week or after next week about this? Are you going to start showing up to these committee meetings where we try to get these laws changed so that the police don't have the right to just pull you over because you have a broken taillight so they can harass you. Um, what are you actually going to do after this week? Because mm-hmm. I don't want to see your your little hashtags on Facebook. You go down to Columbus to the state house and you're taking your little videos and posting them on Facebook. Great. I'm glad that you're getting out there and doing stuff. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm working, so I can't be there too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I need to see more than just a couple of videos for a couple of days. Right. I think I think that's where a lot of people, you know, get, you know, and and, and that's the sad part about a lot of this is is it, it comes and goes so quick. You know, <laughs> yeah, and then and then you know it's you know like just recently, um, you, I think you posted something. Um, <laughs> you posted something just a little or er, today, you know about uh, the Daniel Shaver thing that happened back in 2016. Yes, and you know that was literally within the last few years. Like 2016 wasn't that long ago. Correct. And you know that was a, I mean it was essentially almost the same situation here. Yep. You know, but I, I think I'm, I'm I'm a big proponent of you know being able to have police officers and everything like that, and I realize that not all of them are bad, mm-hmm. but I think they're also I think I think police in general they also need to realize that you know 
you know, shit's different nowadays, <laughs> you know, shit's different nowadays. And, you know, you got to be very mindful of, of how you, and, and I know some of them do, most of them do, but you also, you got to be very mindful of how, how you move in and out of certain situations. You can't just go in, you know, all gun ho, you know, mm-hmm. lock stocked and ready to drop. You know, you can't do that nowadays because yeah. it, it's the, I, I bring it back to, you, you can't do it nowadays because we live in such currently, especially over the last four or five years, it's such a volatile, you know, like powder keg being ready to explode. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be very, like I said, mindful of, of how you approach anyone and everyone, no matter who it is, whether you're black or white, because you just never know. And it just, I, I, it just, it bothers me to no end that, you know, it's, it's so much support thrown behind, you know, police. And they're like, nah, but you know, like, I know people personally who's been caught up and, you know, and, and beat down and tuned up by cops. Yeah. You know, I, I have a, a guy that I grew up with. Hell, I just found out about it. Like me and him grew up together, like as kids, you know, we went to the same school, you know, and he, he talked about it after this situation happened. And he actually told a story for the first time to most people. And I was just like, dude, I did. I never knew that. Yeah. You know, and, and, um, uh, he, he, he mentioned, the, you know, like he was standing, he, they essentially tuned him up from behind. They knocked him on the ground and, you know, just dropped him from behind. <laughs> like he was standing with his back to them and they just ran up on him and just like beat the crap out of him for essentially no reason because of, of a certain situation. You know, they thought he was doing something that he wasn't. And, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they stunned him like nine times. Wow. And just, you know, uh, you know, essentially dry fire. They pulled the barbs out and shit like that and just like just kept jabbing oh. the gun in it. Wow. You know, um, tuned them up really good. And I've had, e- even as a white guy, you know, I've had certain cases growing up in my town, you know, where I lived. You know, I grew up in a very small town, you know, country bumpkin town. And I was kind of like, I ran in the punk rock crew, you know, uh, you know, the heavy metal freak type kids and, <laughs> in, in I was heavy metal, so yeah, in, uh, yeah, I spent some time in a in a country town that didn't really vibe very well. And yeah, I had I had one one officer in general, and I always call this little prick's name out. His name was Officer Joe Pitts. I don't know where you are at today, Joe Pitts, but I stay steady saying your name <laughs> <laughs> just because <laughs> because <laughs> he, anytime that I would come into town or he would see me in town, the guy would stop me whether I was doing anything wrong or not, just stop me. Like I could, I could go up, I could pull up to a site, you know, pull up to a gas station and he would see me, he would roll up and stop and ask me what I'm doing for no other reason than just to harass the shit out of me, you know? And there was several times that I had run-ins with him, uh, you know, being, being cuffed and stopped and inappropriate stuff happened, you know, like kicking my legs out from under me, you know, to where I'm cuffed and he's kicking my legs out from underneath me to yeah. throw me on the ground and inappropriate. Like one time, the reason that I got kicked to the ground is because I was cuffed and they thought I was, you know, selling drugs, but I wasn't, I was in the bathroom taking a piss. <laughs> we were at a football game. Oh, <laughs> it was at like a, high school or something. A high, we were at a high school football game and I was, okay. I was like 18, I was maybe 19 years old. I was just out of high school. And I come out of the bathroom that there's like six cops standing there going, Hey, come over here, kid type stuff. And I'm just like, okay, cool. What's going on guys. And they're like, what are you doing? I was like, I was taking a piss, man. I, I literally just came out of the bathroom. Like, what, no, what were you doing in there? Um, I, I was taking a piss. Okay. <laughs> and they're like, well, we, we had somebody, somebody, somebody mentioned that you were selling drugs. I go selling drugs. What are you talking about? I was like, I don't, I don't do any of that shit. Like, I don't know. What are you talking about? And so they cuffed me. They literally right there in front of the bathrooms, right in front of the concession stands where everybody's standing around watching and looking. And Joe Pitts, he was one of the cops there (laughs) and he was searching me. So I'm cuffed. I have six cops around me. I had 
one in my front pocket, another in my other pocket on each side, both all searching me at the same time. And then Joe Pitt, he took his hand down the back side of my pocket. I was wearing a pair of Jinko jeans. Do you remember Jinko? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was wearing yeah. a pair I was wearing a pair of Jinko jeans and he literally took his hand and goes like this. Like rubs down my leg and like on my butt. And I was like, "Bro, stop stop rubbing my ass, man." <laughs> and what a weirdo. And like it was just like it was situations like that and in particular that cop alone. And it was just like the experiences anybody can experience weird shit like this. You know, like I've told people still to this day, I'm 38 years old. That happened 20 something years ago. Anytime that I get stopped by a cop, I get pulled out of the vehicle. My vehicle gets hmm. searched every time, no matter what it was for, no matter what it's for. It's, I don't know why. Maybe I look like one of the, maybe I look like a guy that might be doing some shady stuff. I don't know. I just think I'm a normal person, <laughs> but hmm. The shit and I wonder if there's something like in your record that they put in there. You know what I mean? Because like, yeah. we don't have, I don't know if we're even able to access like what our record looks like yeah. to make corrections. Well, I, I've had, I had, I, I had one charge and this happened when I was like 20, I was maybe like 21, 22. And I had started smoking pot and everything like that and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, and I got pulled over one time. And that was the only charge that I've ever had. It's the only time that I've ever stayed in, you know, I stayed the night in jail. It's the only time that I've ever been in major trouble in my life. Other than that, I've never had any other charge. I've had a pretty clean record ever since then. Uh, when I do get stopped uh, and they go, have you ever, do you have a history of anything? I always, I'm like, Hey, I had a charge back when I was 20 years old. I'm 38 years. I'm 38 years old now. I haven't done anything ever since. I go, I go, matter of fact, I go, if you want to blood test me, drug test me, anything right now, I'll pass that shit with flying colors. You know, so I'm very upfront and open with them, mm -hmm. but it still comes down to the whole, you know, no matter what it is, depending on the cop and where I'm at, sometimes I'm cuffed. Sometimes they just stand there and talk to me. They're always very nice with me, but it's just the fact that every time that I get stopped, I get pulled out of the vehicle and everything gets searched. See, and I don't like that. That that would make me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um. I was just just watching a video last night of, of a white guy. I hate I hate labeling people by their race. I just yeah. try to say, but just for uh, reference, because people I don't have the video. Mm -hmm. Um. He was recording this police officer. I don't know where he lives. He's recording this cop who, supposedly pulled him over for speeding, and the cop is like, "I'm gonna pepper spray you." And he's like, what are you going to pepper spray me for? Yeah. And I was, my blood was boiling that whole video because I'm thinking, okay, this cop is an idiot because the cop would go, I'm going to pepper spray you. And then he would go like and argue with the guy he pulled over right. and then go back to, I'm going to pepper spray you. And then try to pepper spray the guy. I realized his pepper spray was empty, called for backup. The backup comes and the backup is also helping escalate the situation. Mm -hmm. The backup is not like, whoa, what's happening here? How about you go away? Let me talk to this person that you pulled over and mm -hmm. figure out what's happening. Um, I, I don't like the way police police people mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times all it does is continue to escalate the situation. Me and you were not agreeing already. Now you're bringing somebody else and now it's two against one mm -hmm. and they're going to take your side automatically because you're also wearing a uniform that, you know, that they're also wearing. Right. Um, and there's no, they're not actually de-escalating anything. They're just making it worse. And then, you know, they're going to put on the on the report while the person was being argumentative. That's not mm -hmm. actually what happened. I was disagreeing with you, yes, but it doesn't mean I was being argumentative. I didn't start getting pissed off until you started threatening me. Right. And they never mentioned that part. Yeah. Because um, I had to make, when I got uh, into that incident with that woman, I had to make several phone calls to get information corrected on their report. And even that night I said, Hey, like, this is not correct. Fix it. They didn't fix it. So I had to keep calling mm -hmm. to get it fixed. Um, and that was really frustrating and annoying. There has to be a better way of doing this, that we can hold the police, the police need to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. They cannot, they should not be able to police us without us being able to police them. Right. There should be a balance just like the, you just, just like the, the court system and uh, sorry, the way our government is set up that all the three branches balance each other. Right. I, I think one of the I think one of the main problems that we have today in society is because I, I think the people the people the um, the American people of all all races and creeds they've forgotten what it actually means to be 
an American citizen, you know, as a free people, you know, we're not essentially, you know, it says it throughout almost every founding document that we have, you know, like, you know, we govern, we govern them, we elect our leaders and we are, you know, we are essentially in charge and we've kind of forgot that over the last, you know, 80 to hundred plus years, you know, because we've slowly, slowly gave, gave them more and more power. And we just mm -hmm. keep, we keep seceding power to them. And mm -hmm. I think that's where we get, we get caught up in the trap because, um, um, es essentially I'm, I'm going to make it, I'm going to, I'm going to make a quote, um, by a guy named Eric July. He's pretty, he had a couple hundred thousand people on, on YouTube. He's in a mute, he's in a band and everything. And, um, he, he made, he made a good quote today on Twitter. Um, and he said, when a cop shoots, he's a band, he's a, this is in one of his songs. And he said, when a cop shoots and then he, uh, you know, suffocates in this case, a black man, you focus on the racism, ignoring all the statism, holding signs, writing is not going to save them because you have forgotten that it's that power that you gave them. Yes. You know, we've, we've given power to the state to abuse us. Correct. And I think that's where, I think that's where we got to start pushing people and we got to get people from all stripes, from all sides and being like, Hey guys, like, look, like all of this shit is happening because we allowed it to happen. We give these guys the power to do this to us. And yep. once they give it, once we give it up, it's going to be extremely hard to get back, you know? Correct. And I think that's, like I said earlier, a commonality, a thing that we can all have in common. If we just be able to realize that, you know, w the reasons that we're having so much issues and problems right now is because of us relinquishing our rights and the ability to air grievances to, to our politicians and people in power, whether it's be the police or politicians. I agree. And I, and I also think the biggest issue is that between black and white people, they don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, based on my personal experience, um, like I said, I moved here from another country. So I've had a very like organic experience with people. Um, I went to a really diverse elementary school. There were kids from Pakistan, Egypt. Um, I'm from Ghana personally. Uh, there was a family from Kenya. So like I grew up around different kids from different places who grew up, you know, with right. different types of families. Um, I've always stayed like in the, like the white schools, whatever. Right. Um, but I've always had a diverse group of friends. Um, and I just hang out with who wants to hang out with me. That's just the bottom right. line. But even now as an adult, now that I can expand my circle even more because I can drive and all these things and do other activities, I've just noticed that I, based on my personal experience, again, white people generally tend to be more open and willing to talk. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that black people are not. They like to, they believe what they believe so steadfastly that if you try to challenge how they feel, what they think, they get very emotional about it. And they don't hear what you say. They just assume that you're wrong. They assume that you're racist or that you're a race traitor or that you're a coon or whatever kind of dumb racial insult they want to throw at you at that moment. And then they get loud and, and belligerent with you and they don't listen. So how can you have a conversation um, with anybody that that does not align exactly with how you think and how you feel? Right. Uh, and that's, that's, that's something that you, I mean, uh, I was talking, like I, I was taught, talking to a buddy the other day and i was just like i i think the way that we do stuff like that is to try to find a certain commonality that we can bridge apart you know that we can build that bridge together it's it's very hard you know um and and i'll agree with you, you know um in the realm of politics you know my conservative friends they're more open to talk to anybody and everybody Yep. You know, no matter what they believe, they might argue with you. They might get a little heated about certain things mm -hmm. and hell, they might even call you some names, but <laughs> at least they want to talk to you, you know? And then they'll still say, you know what, brother, I still love you at the end of the conversation. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I have a lot of, a lot, like I said, I have a lot of people that are, you know, on the left side and they're more, you know, and it's sad to say, but when you get them, when you get them, like when you get them not online and you, and you can get somebody in, in person, 
Mm-hmm. So you're more you're more able to uh, build that bridge, you know, because it's hard to build a bridge with somebody online because you don't really you don't really know the person. Yep. You know, so me, I always try. Like I had I had a buddy over the other night, and he's you know he's kind of he he leans my way a little bit more, but he's a little bit more left to center. And um, we sat here the other night and just you know, talk for like three or four hours about anything and everything, you know, uh, you know, the whole black lives matter movement, you know, mm-hmm. and he's a white guy, you know, he's up, he's really hardcore into the punk scene and everything like that does music and everything like that. And we just sat there and talked about all kinds of stuff. And we found those commonalities, you know, it, it helps that I've known the guys since we were kids, but even, even be, being able to build a bridge with somebody, like I have a, I have this one friend on Facebook I don't agree with him at all on anything that he ever says about politics, but the one commonality that we have and that we can, we we've built the bridge upon was pro wrestling. Ah, you know, so I think it's, I think it's those type of relationships that we had, we got to have. And that helps kind of like, you know, okay, this guy might believe different than me, but he's maybe not that bad, you know, because we do, we can, we, we can have a, a little bit of cohesive, you know, being able to talk to each other. And I think that's where most people from the left and the right, you know, fall, fall kind of flat is some, some people on the right are so very staunch in their beliefs Mm -hmm. that no, 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 no amount of talking is, and it's not so much about changing your mind. It's just trying to find a common ground. Like I have a guy, a buddy of mine, Super cool guy. I've known him for decades and a decade now. Extremely staunch conservative, very staunch. Mm-hmm. And he will tell you about it. And and I I was talking to him the other night. He was on one of my sh- he was on I, we me and him recorded an episode. And and I and he's a very big supporter of the gun, you know, second amendment. And I go, "Well, what about what about these guys over on here on the left side that are very staunch gun rights activists too?" I was mm-hmm. like, that's a commonality that you can bridge upon. You mm-hmm. might never agree with them politically. And hell, you don't even have to be best friends with them. But you you do have a common ground with each other. Yep. And I think that's what a lot of people fall flat on is they don't want to find any commonalities. They just want to be like, no, you're the bad guy. Yep. And, and I'm just going to stay away from it because I don't like drama. Yeah. And. You know, I, I'm the type of person I, I'll run head first into everything, <laughs> and yeah. because I, like I said earlier, like I just say what I want to say, and if people don't like it, we can talk about it. Yeah, and, and I, I literally, like, I feel like if we, if we live closer, we'd be really great friends because I'm I'm the same way. I've always been that way. Um, I have a lot of people, especially strangers, who maybe meet me like at an event. Mm-hmm. And either that day or some other time, they'll say, you know, you're really easy to talk to. You're really approachable. Mm. And I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> that makes people feel that way. Right. Um, I mean, people will like start talking to me about really personal stuff. And I'm just like, why did they pick me to talk I've, I've about this? I, I have people that do that too. Yeah. So, uh, but people, you know, I had, I met somebody at CPAC. His name is Mike G. He's a, we're Facebook friends. Mm. Um, he's very active in, and he was in New York. Mm-hmm. He's very active in politics there. Uh, he actually just got a- arrested recently protesting the lockdown. Mm-hmm. So that's an interesting story. But um, we met each other at CPAC, you know, ran to each other a couple times, uh, say hello, whatever. And then recently he was doing a live stream and I hopped on there and I said, hey, Mike. And he was like, princess. He was like, you guys, I met this girl at CPAC. And every time I saw her, she had a smile on her face. And I was like, oh, right. that's so nice. Thank you. And I, I get that a lot. So. And you know what you were saying is, is is absolutely right. It doesn't matter if I don't agree with you on this particular subject. We have many more things we can agree on because at the end of the day, we all like similar colors. At the end of the day, we all like similar products. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we all like similar restaurants. There's always something that we agree on. People just need to allow, like, stop trying to control what the other person is thinking and feeling. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why that is so. I don't know if it's a cultural thing. I don't know if it's a um, um, like evolutionary thing. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it that much. But people just have this itch and urge to control other people. It's like, get, get away from me. Like, I don't need you to control me. I'm good right. over here 
do what I'm doing. If you want to join, great. If you don't want to join, okay, stand aside. I'm yeah. doing my I'm doing my thing right here. So right. I, I I've I've told people on on my YouTube uh, since this is going to be posted on YouTube, I've told people I go, you know, I don't really subscribe to either side. I think <laughs> I think both of them are kind of weird sometimes. So I go, what I want, what I've been, what I've been wanting to push a lot is I, I'm starting my own party. Essentially it's, you know, it's the, it's essentially just the fuck off and leave me alone party. You know, like <laughs> let me do me, let me live my life. Let me think how I want to think. And if you want to join me and thinking how you want to think, whether you believe what I believe in or not, I think, I think if more people just like, just wanted to live their life and be cool and be free you know, to do their own things. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to control anybody. Like all I want people to do is to fight for what they believe in, yep. you know? And, and if you got a goal in life, you know, no matter what side of the track you live on, you know, if you got a goal to go out and fight for it, I don't believe like, I believe that there is, you know, stupid people out there. I believe that there's some very hardcore racist people out there, but I think, uh, just me looking from the outside looking in, you know, I, I lived 13 years in St. Louis at the height of, you know, it being the murder capital of the, you know, of the country, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, I lived in, in some very rough, rough and tumble areas of, of St. Louis, you know, so, and, you know, I got friends, like I said, I got friends of all, all stripes and colors. And I think that people just need to realize that, that we live in a, we live in a society that, no matter where you're from at in life, we have the ability to to go upward and to fight for your dream. It might be harder for some people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could be very hard for some people. Some people may never reach that goal, but as long as you're out there fighting for it, you know whatever your goal in goal at in life or your dream is. If you just wake up every day and, and fight for it, then then you're essentially living that dream, the American dream of yeah. being able to do as you please and not have anybody control you. But we also need to realize that, you know, that pressure that we might feel, whether black, white, Mexican, or anything like that, that pr nine times out of 10, that pressure that we feel of being held down one, it comes from us within, within each other, within ourselves, but it also, there's an, also that element of governmental control of limiting our freedoms and the ability to do things um, because they just want to control and have all the power from us. And I think if we, like I said, if we can find that commonality, that's the common ground that, you know, no matter where you're from, you know, whether you live in the hood or you're a gang member or anything like that, or black, white, you live out in the country. And if we can find that commonality of being able to realize that, our biggest problem that we have is we, we really do have an out of control government mm -hmm. right now. And they just, they're gobbling up power like crazy. Yep. And, and yeah. it comes from both sides. And that's, that's why I'm just, like I said earlier, I'm so wishy washy on all sides sometimes, because if you really look deep into it, like, you know, like I made I made an example. Uh, let me see if I can find the quote, uh, Nikki Haley. Okay. You, you know who Nikki Haley is? Yeah. She made she was a, at CPAC. I just didn't get to meet her. Yeah, she she made a quote. She made a quote the other day. You know, when when the whole uh the the George Floyd thing happened. And it really it, it kind of troubled me because it was just like, wait a second, you know, like you're a conservative. You're supposed to be the freedom lover and everything like that too. But it was this quote she said, Tonight I turned on the news. And I am heartbroken. It's important to understand that the death of George Floyd was personal and painful for many. I 100% agree with that. This is where it kind of, it got me sideways from it. She goes in, but in order to heal, it needs to be personal and painful for everyone. <laughs> and, and coming from the standpoint of she's a, pol she's in the po realm of politics and she has very, very high level, you know, a good amount of power and sway and certain things, it, it left me thinking like, what do you mean by that? Yes. That is what, scary. You know, like you were a politician. What do you mean by it's supposed to be personal and painful for everybody? And then I, I flip on the internet, you know, I turn on the internet, I get on YouTube and I, I look through Twitter and Facebook and I'm seeing all these videos of people being beaten 
and you know people burning places down and it's just like and then you and then you question and you're like why are you burning down why are you burning down this guy's business and they're like oh mm-hmm. fuck it you know fuck that person and it's just like mm-hmm. and then i look back at that and i'm like personal and painful for everybody why why w- what's going on here what's the bigger picture what are people not actually seeing is mm-hmm. this is this really being is this what she means by personal and painful for everyone because then you you lose you lose the the whole point of what it uh, initially was and now it's just painful across the board for everybody yeah and and then some people for that pain they're going to be pissed off and they're going to be retaliating yeah. they're not going to say oh this is sad they're going to say what the fuck dude you just burned down my business that i've put all my life savings into yeah. now i'm out for blood because my insurance company is not going to pay for this because this is not covered under the policy that i have oh yeah yeah I, like i've told people i'm like man insurance don't work like that guys like no it does like, not your, your business I, I i tried to explain to somebody the other day i go your business could be like you know you can make a couple hundred thousand dollars in business you could have four million dollars in stock in your business but you're not going to get that four million three hundred thousand dollars back. Like, no, you know, you might. It's not, get, it's not guaranteed. No. Yeah, and you might you might only get a percentage of that. You might get a hundred thousand back, and that yeah. might help you. But like, you can't you can't get back what you lost because it's something that you work so hard for. Yeah. You know? And and it's sad that people have that mindset. It's that's one thing that I can't I can't I can't see why people are so. They're like, just fuck it, the man, you know, you're killing big, you know, we're just destroying big business. And it's like, no, nah, like, you know, Susie, Susie's, uh, Susie's cupcake shop down there, down the street. She didn't, she didn't hurt nobody. Like she didn't kill, no. she didn't kill anybody. Like, why are you oppressing her? <laughs> like, yes, exactly. And and I don't get that either. You know, I did see this someplace that were burning down the police station. I'm like, okay, even though I don't want you burning da- things down, I could get behind that because that's. <laughs> more of a direct I actually, I actually said that i said that on uh on my facebook i said i said something along the lines of uh you know i'm cool with protesting and rioting and hell even looting if you want to but make sure you direct it at the people that deserve it <laughs> yeah you know, like like you know butch's ice cream shop or you know Susie's hair shop or anything like that those people don't deserve it they didn't do anything direct it right. at the people that it that you know the people that killed that man is the police station. And then a buddy, a buddy of mine sent a, sent me a, a clip on Facebook and he goes, Hey, they burnt down the third precinct. I was like, cool, fine. Go ahead. <laughs> maybe, and I maybe, think that's the only one they did too. I'm like, you guys maybe try the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. Just, I'm just like, because then, it, I, then, it, then I can understand it more because it's directed at the people that did it. Correct. You know, whether, whether there's good people or bad people in that mix, at least they're directing it at the people that it caught, like that caused it. I, I made the analogy uh, of you have a neighbor, you have a neighbor, your neighbor, you know, has a, you know, your neighbor knocks down your fence. So you get mad that your neighbor on, on the left side knocked down your fence. So you go across the street to the neighbor on your right side and you just punch him in the face. Like <laughs> it makes no sense. That's no. how retarded it is. Yes, it, it's, I agree. It's so retarded that people would do that. And it's just like, and then you wonder why people, people don't want to bring businesses and, and yep. it's so hard for people to, and that's where I think that the, uh, it gets lost. It gets lost in translation a lot because it's, it's like you, you created the mess. Yep. You know, like I, me personally, I, when I, when I lived in St. Louis and I seen, you know, seen crazy shit like that, I'm just like, man, I, I would never want to put a business here. Mm-hmm. You know, I want everybody to be employed. I want everybody to, you know, you know, be well off and good, but I, I don't think I would want to risk it. Yep. And then, you know, it, it, and then that cycle of uh, oppression and being poor and, and broke, it gets, it just keeps getting fed. Yes. And, and, and it's a, it's a hard cycle to break, but it, I think, I think we need to start looking higher up instead of like, Looking on the surface, I think we need to look behind that curtain a little bit and realize yeah. that a lot of that stuff's coming from very high up and it's coming from all sides. Yes. And but how do we how do we get people to realize that? That's the issue. And that's yeah. 
that's the question that I've been trying to answer. You know, you try to educate people, they ignore you, they don't listen. Um, you try to tell them in person, they ignore you, they don't listen, mm -hmm. they deny it. Um, I like, other than like taking them there, I don't know how else to get them to like, understand this because I didn't know that police, like when I, now when I hear like the FOP, like the Fraternal Order of Police, mm -hmm. I'm like, get them the fuck out of that situation because I have watched the representatives from those organizations go to these committee meetings that, you know, that we have in every state mm -hmm. and they're in their fancy uniforms and the committee addresses them by name as if they're best friends. And it's, I'm like, this is a freaking clown show. Like right. this, you are not the public. You are not rep representing the public. You're representing the police force and that should not be happening. This committee meeting is for, me and people like me to be speaking up about why we want this or why not right. you are pushing for more power and that should not be happening the prosecutor's office does the same thing mm -hmm. um one of the last meetings i went to it was a da representative in there from the courthouse i'm like what the hell are you doing here am i paying you right now with my tax dollars to be in the state house right now mm -hmm. to to advocate for a law that you can use against me this is unacceptable right um i don't I don't write my speeches ahead of time. I wait till I get there mm -hmm. and then I sit down and I write my speech like as I'm sitting there. Right. Um, my friends, my friend Chuck from OFCC is always like, how do you write your speeches so fast? I'm like, because I have so many things going on in my mind. I'm always thinking about these things, mm -hmm. but I don't want to write it too far ahead of time because then it's going to be long. I'm going to go through and try to edit it. I'm going to make it this. And so I try to get there. I try to make it concise and to the point. Yeah. And um, I had so many of the people on the committee who were more on my right side, if I'm facing the podium, right, right. Um, that were like, giving me a thumbs up, like, man, that was a really strong speech. Um, and it was funny. It's always the leftist ones that are always mad. This is one particular guy that Cecil Thomas, he used to be a police officer. I think, in, I think it's Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. I want to say that sounds right. Um, and he always asks, anytime there's a pro gun person up, he always asks these like draconian questions that make no sense and i'm very direct so i always like fire back at him mm -hmm. and i i try to st i like i stump him because he can't goat me emotionally uh, i'm not that emotional so when people try to use emotion to get me to do something mm -hmm. i just come at them with logic and then they don't know what to do next yeah i think that's another you made a good point there about being emotional i think i think that's a i think that's another big part of where a lot of the divide even even just not just in politics but even in the the realm of you know black people and white people i think that's there's a lot of emotion built up into that and mm -hmm. and, and i realize it and i understand that there's a lot of a uh, emotional trauma and pain for some people and yeah. you know i i understand that but you know i still try to i, I try to put myself in everybody's position uh, and that's why one of the one of the ways that i'm able to move in and out of of so many different lanes is because I've, I, I've been, I've been poor. I've been homeless. You know, I, I, I've went through every echelon of where you could live at, except for being extremely wealthy. I've never been extremely wealthy. You yeah. know, I have family members that are very extremely wealthy, but I'm not extremely wealthy, you know? So I've, I've tasted a little bit of every aisle and I've been on every aisle of po the political aisle, except for the extremely far left. And the extremely far right, so I've I've been able to essentially move in and out of all of these different circles, and I, I try to be very mindful of how you know more empathetic to people in certain people's stories. I I got a really good buddy, and I hope to have him on the show. He's a black man, and um, he was he did some illegal shit back in the day whenever he was a young young man, and mm -hmm. he's I think he's forty forty five now. And um, he's wanting to fight, you know, and try to get his right to be to be, you know, a, a law abiding gun owner. Yeah. And he's he's had all kinds of trouble about how to how to get that, you know, how to work and work that back. And I think that's one of the things that um, that that we should be able to do as, uh, you know, people just in general, as people that come out of the, you know, the prison systems and stuff like that. I think we should be able to, I think they should be there, there. There should be a clear pathway. And it's one of the things that I wish that they would have done with prison reform. 
is to have a clear pathway to have people to have their rights restored. Yeah. You know, because then, then when, when you get into that realm of, you know, being an inmate and being incarcerated and everything like that, and then you get out, you know, I mean, you don't have, you essentially still don't have any right as an American citizen yeah. to, I mean, you can't vote. You can't, you know, you can't own a gun. You can't, the only thing that you have is your voice, but then your voice is essentially hampered because, Hey, you're just that old crook. Yeah. You know, I think there, I think that's one thing that I was really upset about. I was totally for, you know, the prison reform thing. I was like, I think that's a great thing to do. But when they didn't implement anything like that about, you know, restoring rights to, to people, uh, it, it kind of was just like, man, why didn't you do this? You had the opportunity to, to restore mm-hmm. the rights of, because that's one, that's one thing that happens with people. And they're like, well, fuck it, man. You know, like you guys don't give me my rights. I don't have any right to do this. So why, so, so why even get involved in anything? I'm just going to yeah. sit here and do my thing. And, and then, and then you essentially kick these people out of the conversation as a whole. I think, I think we, we need to do better and, and try to direct people more, but how do you do it? Like, that's, that's the one question I don't have. I don't have any questions for it. Or I don't have any like, answers. Any answers? Yeah, I don't have <laughs> yeah, any I, answers I, for it. Like, I get what you meant. Yeah, I, I, don't um, have, I don't have any answers for it. You know, like how, how do I, we how do we push the government into being like, hey, these, these people, especially if you if you're not a recurring a, a recurring offender, like like my buddy, he 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 did one crime, he did his time, and he's been a law abiding a citizen law abiding citizen for twenty five years now. Yeah, you know, like I I think he's. I think he deserves, you know, to have, to be a, an American, essentially, <laughs> you know, like that's what, yeah. like, if you don't have all your rights, you know, to me, like you, well, you might be an American, you might live here, but you don't have the right. They don't give you the right to be an actual citizen because you don't have all your rights. Yeah. Illegals essentially have more rights than you at that point. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, weird. um, it, it's, it's, it's very wrong, yeah. but you know, it's really funny that we're talking about, you know, being a felon because I, when I was younger, I have, I, everybody has this misconception about people who have records, mm-hmm. including me. Cause mm-hmm. when I was younger, I was always told like, Oh, if you're a felon, you're a really bad person. Mm-hmm. As I've grown up and I've you know, I gotten to that situation. And then um, I was dealing now that I've been at the state house and looking at things like that, I'm realizing you can get a felony for almost anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, Martha Stewart has a felony. Um, mm-hmm. Was it like insider trading? I don't even mm-hmm. know what she went to prison for. I just thought it was, oh, yeah. I was like, well, you know, um, nobody really thinks about all of the things that fall under a felony. Um, oh, yeah. Everybody assumes that you're a rapist or a murderer or something like that. They never think of the other smaller crimes you can commit, um, yeah. like money laundering can be a felony. So, mm-hmm. and actually it's um, ironically, like I'm dating somebody now who, you know, has a felony record mm-hmm. um, and just like your your friend, they they offended. They went to prison, served their time, and they've been law abiding ever since. Yeah. Um, they're a good person. They're trying to change their life or whatever they're doing now, mm-hmm. and they trying to. I I don't know if he wants to try to restore his voting rights. He's not really into politics, which right. is yeah. really funny because he's dating me, and I'm very much into politics. But right. um, so I don't know if he even cares. But I told him, you know, I think you should care because you're there's a lot of you out there um and a lot of people who were wrongfully prosecuted oh, yeah. that are out there that currently don't have rights and they should and yeah. that does need to be fixed I, uh, and i think that's where i go back to you know finding things where we could be like hey you know like i i have i have a clear i have a clear stance on who should be able to have their their rights restored if you murdered anybody you know like i don't think you you know like no like n- no because then you ought Depend, you know, like a manslaughter, if it was accidental or something like that. But if you clearly premeditated, you know, and you went out there and murdered somebody or, you mm-hmm. you know, you went out there and raped somebody or raped a child or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you should have. I don't think you should have your rights back. Um, yeah. That's where I draw my line at. But somebody that's been, you know, even somebody that's done, you know, you know, like like an armed robbery or something like that. People can't people can be reformed, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, some people can't, some people can, mm-hmm. you know, in the instance of my friend, you know, he, he hasn't done anything illegal. He hasn't committed no crime. He's had a great record ever since then. You know, he's a family man. He has a job. He's a steady worker. 
you know, a model citizen, you yeah. know, anybody, if, if you didn't know, if he didn't mention that he had a past, you know, a past felony, you would have never, you would never know if, if he didn't tell you, he, you would never know. Yeah. And I think that's, I think those are building bridges and commonalities that we can find with people, you know, you know, no matter what race you are in, you know, no matter what race you're in and, you know, and be like, Hey, these people deserve a seat at the table. That's one yeah. thing that, that's one thing about our society is everybody should have a seat at the table. And I think that's another thing that we have a big issue with is we have a, everybody has a seat at the table, but we only get the opportunity to pick two, two, ta- two placemats. Yeah. You know, like I, I made it, I made it a, a while back. Uh, I made the analogy of like, I would rather have, uh, cause we have, we have like 15 political parties. Oh, but we're 15. We have like, we have like 15 political parties in the country. Some are very small. Some are very, um, like we have, a the, the uh, is it something, uh, the marijuana reform party. It's a very, it's very, you know, limited in what they actually want to do. And that's all they want to, they, they want to talk about. But I believe that these people, those people should have that seat at the table. Yeah. And be able to be like, they should be on ballots. You know, if, 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 if they want to put their more, a bigger message out there, Everybody should be like, oh, hey, instead of just Democrat and Republican, mm-hmm. you know, we should be able to have, you know, hey, the marijuana reform party. We should be able to have the libertarian, the green party. Um, hell, there's even, you know, the Democratic, uh, Democratic Socialist of America party. There's even, yeah. a communi- there's even a communist party. And as bad as that is to say, I'm not mm-hmm. a fan of communism or socialism, but I think it, those people should have that seat at the table their their name should be on those ballots because whether their views are shitty and retarded which they are they should still have that seat at the table because essentially that's what it is to be american you should be able to have that and not just be able to avoid you know choose between the lesser of the two evils because you know you you hear the oh i had to vote for this guy because it was the lesser of two evils and it's just like why do we put ourselves into this position to be like vote for that like and it goes back to what i said earlier we keep doing it yeah we don't realize that like nah we should just be like you know no like we're not voting for either one of you people like we want more options and and if you go through like all the state houses you very rarely see you know like libertarians and greens in there every once in a while you might see them in there Mm -hmm. maybe some people in some of the parties might have you know like there's libertarians in the conservative party but they mm-hmm. label themselves Republican and conservative. Why? Yep. Like, they they do that because it's politically expedient because that's the web that we've been weaved into of only picking two people, uh, only picking two sides and not having a broader I think I think a lot of a lot of the problems that we have in society would be alleviated if we had more choices with people. I agree. I agree because then, you know, like competition like in the marketplace, they would have to produce a better product to actually well, get your vote. It wouldn't be like, oh, well, are you picking Walmart or or Target, you know, and they're both going to jerk you around whichever way they want to. Yeah. I well, mean, oh, look at the social media uh, companies now. Like, they're getting hardcore pushback from people. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad that the president's also bringing that up, too, and uh, trying to put a kibosh to that bullshit. Yeah. Because uh, that's been going on for way too long, oh, censoring yeah. people's voices. You can't claim to be, oh, we're a platform and you know, because we're under these legal protections, you're allowed to post stuff. And and YouTube used to be really great. It used to be amazing. You could find everything on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Now, like it, they really push a certain thing, and it's like this is not enjoyable anymore. Right, right. Um, I, I'm not on the internet to be told what to do. If I want to do that, I'll go back to school. Yeah. Um, I'm here to find other things that I may not see every day in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like um, I'm I'm a like. I got, I got on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for like two years now and I'm very outspoken. Like I've said before, you know, like I just say how I feel and I say what I want to say. And even being very low on the totem pole and in, in YouTube, you know, I only have like a, a little over a thousand subscribers, not very many. Like I'm, very, a big low, deal, though. I'm very low on the totem pole and I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. But even being so low on that totem pole, I I've, I've felt, you know, the, the cruel hand of Susan. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, like um, just back in, or back in December for Christmas, 
I got my whole entire channel demonetized. Oh, wow. You know, and I'm just, and I, and I, but I said it from the get go. When I started my channel, I go, look guys, uh, I don't really care about monetization because my channel is probably going to be demonetized anyways, because of this shit that I say. And, and, and that's, I, I, I kind of like essentially condition people to how I am to like, oh, I'm just going to say how I feel, you know, like I made a video about John Brennan, you know, the former CIA director. And I just, I just laid into him about, he, he made a comment uh, a while back about Rand Paul being, you know, a very contemptible person. And, Hmm. Uh, he's going to go down in history as, you know, a, a, a slime ball and a sleaze essentially is what John Brennan said. I'm like, John Brennan, like John Brennan, come on, bro. Like you were the, you were the director of the CIA mm -hmm. and, and like everybody, everybody in this country, whether you're left, right or center, you know, that the CIA is a pretty shady organization. They've done a lot of yeah. crazy, crazy wild shit, you know? And, yes. and essentially I just went to town on them and I was just like, you know, like I made the video, I put it out there and I was just like, ha, huh, I'm going to tweet it to him. I'm going to, I'm going to tweet it to him. Oh, it's you, John. <laughs> so I tweeted it to him for like a week straight. I don't know. Oh, if, you're hilarious. I don't, I don't know if they watched it, you know? So I'm like, I think, I think if more people test, uh, if more people test our, our people in power and, and mm -hmm. the one thing that I, I've, I've said consistently is our politicians and our people in power, whether it be the CIA, the FBI, police, you know, police officials or anything like that, they've never, they've never had the screws put to them enough. Yeah. We've let them run free reign over us for decades and decades and decades now. Um, I, I taught, I made a, I made an example the other day uh, to a buddy of mine. I go, I go in the, in the late seventies and early eighties, uh, you know, the, well, late seventy, late sixties, early seventies, you know, the black, the blacks, black, black people in our society were very doing very well for themselves. They were still on the foothills of, you know, the civil rights era and everything like that. But they did, they built their, they built the community up. You know, the Black Wall Street com community where they were very well off and business owners, and you know, they're pushing for the American dream. And then guess what? Boom, 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 boom. You know, you know the crack at the crack ep epidemics happened and all of this stuff happened. And, and if you really look deep into those things, like a lot of that shit was pushed by shady, shady people in government, mm -hmm. shady organizations, mainly the CIA and other places like that, you know? And it was just like, why do we, why do we let these people essentially reign over us? Like they're the, like, they're our Kings. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm a white man, so I don't, I don't understand. I understand it from my position, but I've tried to ask people, you know, of different ethnicities and stuff like that. I'm like, why, why do we allow these people to think that there are rulers and are, there are controllers? I, I've never had anybody answer that question for me. Uh, do you have an answer for something like that? Like, uh, not really, but I, I feel like maybe it's the way school is set up. Yeah. And obviously they do that for a reason. Oh, your school, your kid has to go to school. And obviously most parents can't afford private school. So they go to the public school and the public right. school gets controlled by some government agency and then by some school board and they always have agenda. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because I can remember things from my elementary school, uh, mo not maybe not things that we were taught, but mostly like with my teachers. Mm -hmm. um, I had one teacher in particular and I used to not like her, even mm -hmm. though I liked her tenacity, I didn't like her at the time because you know kids would always bully me i used to have an accent right and kids would make fun of me because i had this you know british accent and she, there was something she would always say she i think she, i can't remember what it is right this moment and it, it, I, I hate that i can't remember it but basically if somebody's bullying you she'd be like we'll stay away from them mm -hmm. um no, no 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 it wasn't it was i think she would basically try to tell you like not confront the person but like address it with them mm -hmm. And I thought we were always told, oh, get the teacher, get the teacher. So as a kid, you never learn these coping uh, mechanisms mm -hmm. of how to deal with a bully or how to deal with a situation that's not just very straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and now that when I got older, I was like, man, I see why she was doing that. She's trying to push us to be self-reliant and not depend on the teacher to come do everything for us. Right. Um, but you know, most schools aren't that way. You, they want you to come to the teacher for everything and, 
And if you don't, you get punished for it. Cause I had that happen to me too at the same mm -hmm. school. Uh, yeah. Me and this girl were very close. There were some kids, some like third, third, fourth, fifth graders that were fighting. Like mm -hmm. we had this big field, this big grassy field. There were some kids fighting out there. So me and her were walking, just walking by, okay, witnessing this happen. We didn't immediately run to go tell the teacher. And we both ended up in peak with those kids right. because we just didn't tell. And it's like, this is ridiculous. Why are we even in trouble for this? So I think it's really an indoctrination thing. They start you early depending on other people. Mm -hmm. You believe everything that person says. You believe that they're educated so because they're educated, that they know everything or that their opinion um, has holds water. Right. Um, and, you know, we have to get away from that that not just because you read it from a book doesn't mean it's true. Right. Um, and just because you read the book or have a, excuse me, your PhD doesn't make you smart either. Right. So you, you think it's something that like, you know, a, a societal type thing that we can, we can push to people, you know, to be like, you know, Hey, you know, like um, a guy I mentioned a while ago, Eric July, he, he pushes about self-reliance and, you know, self-empowerment, you know, and, uh, be essentially being the controller of your life, you know, and, and like, I, I, I'll make an exa uh, example, you know, like, like you said in school, you know, like I was picked on in school a lot, you know, cause I'm, I'm a short guy. Okay. Know, I'm not, I'm not a tall guy, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I had people mess with me all the time, but something that my mother, you know, love her to death. You know, she always told me, she goes, she goes, if you, she goes, never, Nobody can ever tell you who you are as a person and always stand up for what you, you believe in. So, and, and always fight back for what, you know, if somebody's, you know, fight back, you know, whether it be physically or verbally. Mm -hmm. So when people would come to me and they would try to make jokes about me being short or anything like that, like my nickname was shorty, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, I always when the I could always I could always sense the people who were, you know, just doing it, you know, jokingly and being like, yeah, how you know, I look at shorty, and I could under I could I could see the difference of them. even at a young age, I was able to be like, okay, this guy's coming at me in an aggressive way, and this person's coming at me in a playful way, mm -hmm. um, and and that helped me realize that some of the people that I thought might have been bullying me weren't actually bullying with bullying me. They were just making jokes and everything like that and having fun. Like kid, mm -hmm. you know, kids are silly. The kids are stupid. They say dumb things, you know, yep. but you got to realize, I think something that we could teach our kids. I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I don't, I don't have any kids or anything like that, but I think something that we can teach our kids, you know, whether you have kids or whether your friends have kids is, is that ability to be able to, look and see if somebody's coming at coming at me in an aggressive manner or if they're coming at me in a playful manner because then that alleviates the options of of the bullying you know yes the big problem in our society today is you know, people being bullied and stuff like that you hear you know you know one of the reasons that you know so many we have so many school shooters you know like oh they were bullied well they didn't learn they didn't learn that mechanism of being able to tell if it's you know, if it's playful or mm -hmm. if it's, if it's a serious matter, if it's somebody aggressing onto you and go back yes. to freaking libertarian or libertarian <laughs> side, uh, they, yeah. they're aggressing on me. Yeah. You know, so the people that, the people that came at me in a, in a, in a sideways manner, those people, those people was met with the mindset of my mindset that I've always had because it, you know, it, essentially my mom instilled it in me of, Nobody could nobody could fuck with me mentally because you can't beat me if I beat you first. You know, meaning like, you know, they come at me with, oh, oh hey, look, it's the midget guy. And, then, and if I come back, you know, if I come back at them and I'm just like, well, I mean, tell me something I don't already know. I'm sure. Yep. You know, da, da, da. Yep. I think seeing friends that's had kids and just watching society as a whole. That's something that I do a lot. I just watch people. I'm a people watcher and I go out, you know, and I'm out and about and I just see people and I'm just like, well, you know, the, obviously this kid, like he's not being the kid, that kid's not being taught that mechanism of being, ob being able to, how to move through society. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think that's where we could start at. 
And I think a lot of the stuff that a lot of societal problems could be started at home and teaching, teaching our kids and our youth of, you know, being aggressed upon and not aggressed upon and, and being how being know, knowing how to react to each one of those situations. I agree. Uh, they're not being taught survival skills They're being yeah. taught, like I said, depend on somebody else to help you skills. And th that's not really how we are. I would say as a species, we wouldn't be where we are as a species if we we're always like, oh, mom, come help me. Oh, my gosh, they hurt my feelings. Um, I feel bad for the generation of kids after me because they are having it way worse mm -hmm. than what I had it. Um, because I, I keep saying this, making this comment that we're going to have a generation of kids who know how to have BDSM sex in elementary and middle school, and they're not going to know how to do taxes. They're not going to know how to have mm -hmm. any kind of practical skills because they're too busy pushing this new agenda that's even more extreme than whatever agenda was being pushed when I was growing up. Right. I mean, uh, just like, I, I just don't, I, I have a lot of thoughts on things, but I, I never know how to implement it because like, like I said, I don't have kids, so I can't teach kids. You know, you can't just randomly be like, Hey kid, do this. You know, <laughs> like so I, I work, I work in, I work in a restaurant right now. Like it's kind of my full-time job and I do all this stuff on the side and, and I work, I get to work around a lot of kids you know, a lot of kids, do they come in? I'm, I'm a cook, you know, so yeah. I'm there all day long. So the kids come in and they do the dishes and whatnot. And some of them are waitresses and stuff. And I, it's one thing that I, I've kind of made it my mission to, if, if I have the platform and the ability to talk to people and to listen to people and, and to be able to, you know, talk to people of all, all areas is, is, and I try to tell these kids that I, that I come in contact with every day. And I'm like, look, guys, you know, like you're 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 in you're in this position in in life right now. You're getting a lot of shit thrown at you and everything like that. But I just want to let you guys know that the the key is it, just my personal opinion. You can take it for what it's worth. But one of the thing that you need to realize is mostly everything that you've ever been told is a lie. <laughs> like, yeah. and I go, just question. You need to question everything every mm -hmm. yep and and you need and, and and feel free to ask questions too yeah that's that's really the only way to gain experience and knowledge if you don't ever ask people you know the comment that nikki haley ma made if we could go ask her i'm sure we would both go ask her what did you mean by that yeah uh but people with this assumptive attitude that they have they think they know everything so then they just run along thinking they know the answer and it's really they, their answer is wrong because they didn't actually ask the originator of the comment. Right. I, I've never, I, like I, I've told people, I go, I've never claimed to know everything and I'm always, <laughs> I'm always open to be being wrong. And yes. I, and, and if somebody came to me and was like, nah, Jason, you're wrong about this. And here's why mm -hmm. I'm going to be, I'm man enough to be like, nah, okay. I was wrong. I understand it. Uh, I'm, yes. I'm cool. And I think that's where uh, one of the many problems that we have in our society is nobody wants to be nobody wants to be wrong everybody always wants to be right yes and people don't want to be introspective either they don't want to say okay what am i doing that might be detrimental to my life mm -hmm. or the life of my partner or whatever it is and try to say okay i should be working on this thing maybe i should be checking in with myself every month or every mm -hmm. three months to see am i making improvement and mm -hmm. I don't know how I have all the wisdom that I have. Um, you know, Facebook has like those memory things. Mm -hmm. And I take a look at those when those pop up. I, I think one of the memories today was I made some kind of comment about me growing and changing and that it's not perfect, but at least I'm making progress. And I'm like, this is like 11 years ago. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. like even as a 19 year old, however old I was at that time, mm -hmm. I was still thinking the way that I was thinking when I was in elementary and middle school. Yeah. Um, I don't know how some of us have that and how a lot of people don't have that. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I went through, um, a, a, a couple of incidents years ago. You know, I mentioned to you before we started the show that, you know, I was a pro wrestler mm -hmm. and, um, I lived a very, a very fast and loose, loose lifestyle. You know, I don't know if you know anything about pro wrestling or, you know, just in general, <laughs> A lot, no, of the, not really. a lot of a lot of the old school guys, you know, the superstars, they running fast and loose, you know, partying, drinking, and doing all kinds of wild and crazy stuff. And I kind of got into that mindset, you know, that mode. You know, I, I had a full time job, a forty hour work week, 
and I was training, training wrestling three days a week. And I was wrestling four days a week, you know, traveling to places like, you know, Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, Georgia, North Carolina, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and all of this stuff. So like I was living very, very fast and loose with my lifestyle, you know, drinking and, you know, you, in that biz, in that type of business, you get beat up a lot. It's, 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 it's not real. It's fake. You know, everything's predetermined, but the initial impacts and everything that you feel on your body, that's a very real element, mm -hmm. you know, so pains and stuff happen, injuries happen. And there's elements in that business to where you get to the point of where you don't want to lose that spot where you're at. So you just keep going. And then that's where, you know, be getting into the mode of like muscle relaxers and pain pills and drinking okay. to cope with pain and stuff like that okay. gets you in. But at also at that same time that I was living that very fast and loose lifestyle, I was having a lot of personal issues at home issues. Uh, mm -hmm. Me and my old man, uh, we were having a lot of personal issues with each other, fighting and arguing. And, you know, you need to live this type of way. And I wanted to live this type of way. And so it was a very volatile situation in my life at that time. Mm -hmm. And it started to wear on me and it mentally like broke me like to the point of where like I was like manic, you know, like angry, volatile, snapping at anybody and everybody in my life, no yeah. matter what it was. Like you could say something that was very, you know, like, hey, you know, uh, do this and, ah, you know, just and, and I would yeah. blow up no, no questions asked. And, and I ended up, I, I, I told a story to a friend of mine a while back and I go, I sat out on, on the banks of the Mississippi river in St. Louis, right under the St. Louis arch. And I sat there after a show one night, I got dropped off. Uh, the buddy that I was driving, we were coming back from Illinois to, from a show and I had him drop me off and I walked up and where I had him drop me off, I walked like two miles up to the St. Louis Arch and I sat there on the riverbank on the Mississippi. And I sat there just thinking and like, dude, you were spiraling out of control. Like you you were very, very not right in your head. You're, you know, very volatile, you know, very combative against anybody and everybody. Even if they were trying to help you, like I was very combative. And uh I sat, I was sitting there listening to music and everything like that. And then I was listening on, on YouTube and I came across a video from an old school wrestler, ultimate warrior. And it was a motivational video that he put out. And he talked about being the controller and the ruler of your life and, and, and looking, looking within yourself and realizing that a lot of the problems that you face in your life could be stemming from different inst instances in your life. If you had a bad childhood, you know, or drug abuses and stuff like that, or, you know, you know, being physically abused and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff, some of that stuff is very uncontrollable, but a lot of the, a lot of your issues in life that you have, uh, are created about c created about you. And you need to be able to look within yourself and be able to break down that door of, you know, cause everybody closes, everybody has a certain situation, you know, a certain aspect of their life that they close off and they keep it packed down really tight. Yep. And, and me, and I, I, I seen that, I seen that video and I was like, man, like, yo, like I, I feel this. And, and it, it was something like something snapped in my head and I was just like, I need to leave. I need to leave. I need mm -hmm. to go away. You know, like I need to get away from all of this stuff because it's not good for me. Yeah. You know, because I, I need to, I need to go on a mission and, and I need to go on a journey and, and, and try to do what this man said of being able to look with deep, deep within myself and break down that barrier that closed off, you know, kind of like boiling underneath the surface type thing. Yes. And I need to break that wall down and use that as the fuel that's going to fire me to get me out of all of this stuff. And when I did that, like it was night and day, like it, as soon as I started putting forth that effort to be the controller and the ruler of my life, essentially, I, I, I call it being the author of the book of my life. Mm -hmm. I, I now no longer, I will not any longer let anybody write in my, in my book. I am the controller mm -hmm. of what I do and, and what I say. And I think 
a lot of people need to be able to uh, break down that wall because that wall is a a very extreme barrier for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It's scary uh, looking at your own oh, yeah. demons and oh. trying to because I my childhood wasn't like amazing. It was better, I would say, than probably a lot of people, but it wasn't amazing mm-hmm. either. Um, being the oldest of four siblings, I had a lot of responsibilities. Um, right. Me and my brother are close in age, but then I have two younger sisters after him. Right. I was nine when the first sister was born. Uh-huh. My parents started a business uh, like not too long after that. So they were always busy doing that. That meant that I was in charge of watching my brother and my sister. Then they had another sister You know, a year and a half later. Mm-hmm. Um, I became the third parent in the house. I had all the responsibility, mm-hmm. but I had none of the um, none of the rewards of being responsible. You know, right. if you give your kids more responsibility, usually you give them an allowance or you give them more permission to do stuff. Yeah. I didn't yeah. get any of that. I just got in trouble all the time, and it was mm-hmm. very so. It made my teen, like my preteen, teenage life, really rough and really frustrating. So we just like fought all the time. Even now, like I still fight with my sisters because. Oh, yeah. I don't resent them anymore. Like I did like for a long time, I resented them because I felt like they, they are the reason that my life was hell. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, um, I don't feel like they gained the respect for me that they should have gained for me mm-hmm. because my parents didn't give me the authority to punish them when it was needed. So right. they, I feel like even now they feel like they can just cut, try to run over me. And I'm a very uh, type A personality. You're not going to run over me. Mm-hmm. Um, me so, we clash on that. So I just don't spend that much time with my family because they don't listen <laughs> when yeah. I'm saying this is the problem. This is where it comes from. Um, and I just got tired of trying to talk about it all the time. So yes, yeah. you know what you did in your situation, getting away from it sometimes is the best answer, at least for a while. Yeah. And then maybe you can figure some things out. Maybe I'm, I mean, I'm Christian. So maybe the like, God is trying to put you in the right place to meet this person. That's right. going to help you with that. Um, so yes, getting away from some certain things sometimes is the best way to deal with it. Yeah. Like I, I grew up, I grew up, um, you know, I wouldn't say that my, my parents were, you know, you know, they weren't super religious or anything like that. Like, you know, they always let us go to church. And I, like I said, I lived in a very small town, you know, mm-hmm. so I would go to the church and because you know, friends go there and we have that common, the common bond, you know, of being in that very small town. So everybody knows each other, everybody goes to church and whatnot. And and my one thing that I always grew up when I grew up, like the church, like I was always, I was always kind of the weird kid, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, I, I hung out with the punk rock crew, you know, and, you know, I, I'd always go into the church and I would always wear, you know, like band t-shirts and, you know, but they never, that church that I, I always, they kind of, they kind of helped shape me as a kid because it made me realize that, you know, that not all churches are bad. Some some of them are bad. You know, some of them are very, um, you know, like uh, they get the, you know, the, the typical stigma of, you know, very being very preachy, you know, like, Oh, Mm -hmm. you got to do this, 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 and this, 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 or, you know, God hates you type stuff. And it's just like, these people were very open with me. So, you know, they're like, okay, you know, like, okay, cool. You know, I remember, I remember getting looks. I, I would come in there with, uh, there was a punk rock band called the misfits Okay. And, and their logo, their logo was just a skull, you know, like, yeah. and, and I'd come in there with misfit t-shirt on and, you know, just all your jinkos, you know, just being the weird, being, your chain being, wallet, being the weird kid. And, uh, I got a couple of eyeballs and everything like that, but they, when they realized that I was the, I was a very sensible kid, like I was very out there, you know, like I would always try to do the crazy things. I was always kind of, the loud boisterous kid. Okay. But they, they realized that, you know, that's, that was me. And they kind of, they let me be me. They let me do me. And they never, after that initial first, you know, handful of times that I went, they just was just like, Oh, that's, that's just Jason. Good old, good old Jason (laughs) you know, being the type of kid. So it gave me a different mindset, you know, from the, the realm of Christianity, Christianity and Catholic, Catholicism get, gets a bad rap, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and very pushy and preachy. And like I said, you know, in that, that aspect of my life gave me a different aspect of it because I realized like, oh, maybe not all of them are bad. I might, mm-hmm. I might not be so religious nowadays, you know, like I don't, you know, I don't go to church and stuff like that, 
but I'm very mindful. Like I said previously, I'm very mindful and I believe that there's something bigger to the whole thing. And one of the things that I've always said, I got a really good friend. Uh, he comes on and hangs out on my show all the time and very big Christian, you know, very deep in his roots. And, and, um, we've had a lot of conversations about it and I'm just like, you know, like my, my concept of the Bible is just like the, the way that I interpreted it is like, do you be as good as you can be? You know, you're, you're always going to, you're, you're going to be a sinner no matter what we're, yeah. we're, we're, fucked up people essentially we're sinners there's nothing that we can do about it but just try to be the best human being that you can be yeah you know and and don't be you know essentially don't be a shit bag <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, and that's the way that i've i've interpreted the bible and it's left me open to be able to you know look at people of of, of the very hardcore cr- christian type people i'm just like okay i understand you i get you where you're coming from type thing mm. And I think that, that's another thing that a lot of people, they don't want to be like, ah, oh, I don't want you to push it down my throat type stuff. And I'm just like, man, just listen. Like, yeah, no matter what, no matter what realm of where you come from, like there's lessons and teachings in everything, whether it be the Bible, yes. whether it be just life situations, everything's, everything's a lesson that you can take from. You don't have to believe it. Just listen to it. Correct. Yeah. Take the information and go on to the next thing because yeah, it can come in handy. Yeah. Um, actually speak, you know, that's funny that you mentioned that because just yesterday, um, uh, there was like, I'm in a, a lot of Facebook. I've, I'm in like over 200 Facebook groups. It's just too. ridiculous. <sighs> uh, because people see, you know, people like you, they see me, they, they see that I'm really outspoken. They're like, Oh my gosh, you got to join this group. And yeah. I'm usually open to just accepting it because, because then I get to get exposed to other people too. Mm. Well, this woman was like, well, all I see is people just rioting and da, da, da. And I said, actually, I've been watching videos from people who are on the ground, people that I know personally, mm-hmm. um, who are taking videos of them being at these protests. And that's what you're seeing on the news is not what's happening everywhere yeah. all the time. And I'm trying to get people to understand that they need to separate the protesters from the rioters because it's not necessarily the same group of people. Yeah. There may be some that at nighttime they want to do that, but you're not going to know who it is. Uh, but there's a lot more people who are peacefully speaking out and just peacefully chanting and whatever, holding their signs that are not getting the recognition that they should be getting. Yeah. And I'm trying to get my friends on the right to understand that because when we go to just like the Virginia rally, mm-hmm. Northam was trying to say, Oh, there's going to be white supremacists and all this blah, blah, blah. There were people of every race at that rally. I've never seen an Indian person at a gun rally before. That was my very first time seeing that. Uh, There was a group there, Vietnamese for uh, for Trump, and they had a big flag, and they were very happy to be there. Um, I saw a lot of black people there. I saw a lot of white people there. I saw a lot of women there. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, and the media tried to make it look like the Virginia rally was going to be a big white supremacist thing, and they got their asses, you know, thrown in the trash basically oh, yeah, because people are like, Oh, look, look at these bat. And actually I, be- I became Facebook friends with some of these guys, um, um, from, from the rally. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's funny and, and it's frustrating because again, the people on the right are like, we don't trust the media. We don't trust what they say because we go to these rallies. We know they're peaceful. We know they're fine. Mm-hmm. The media portrays us as this evil thing but they're doing the very same thing to the people who are now speaking out about the right. whole black lives matter thing. I don't necessarily agree with the black lives matter rhetoric, you know, based on the conversation we had earlier, like I said, right. I'm more of a, what you said too, more of how do we fix the law that's causing the cops to be able to do this to people? That's what I'm more concerned about. Not necessarily who it's happening to more, just the fact that it's happening bothers me. Right. Um, and so I'm trying, I was going to make a video yesterday, but I was trying to think of like what I wanted to say and trying to think through exactly how I want to put things because I know it's going to piss a lot of people off because right. I'm going to tell both sides, you're both idiots because mm-hmm. you guys on the right are doing the exact same thing that people on the left are doing. People on the left, you were just bitching about people on the right a few weeks ago and now you're out yeah. doing all this crazy stuff. So both of you need to shut up and like sit down, calm down. And people on the right need to listen to people on the left and people on the left need to listen to people on the right and have a conversation and mm-hmm. stop trying to point points past each other. Cause that's all they're doing. Yeah. 
this person over here is making this point. This person over here is, well, what about this point? That's not what we're discussing right now. I brought up the subject is this particular color I want to discuss. Now you're asking me about this color that has a drop of orange in it. And that's not what we're discussing. And that's, that's something that really irritates me about the conversation. I got it. I, I don't get, I don't get, I don't get triggered very easy. <laughs> but that's something that triggers me to know in it. And it is, it, it's idiocy from all. And that's why, I, that's why I say I can't, like I said, I've been on both sides of the aisle and I was mm-hmm. years ago. I was that guy, that conservative guy that was just like, nah, 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 you know, <laughs> constantly pointing fingers. And it was just like, and then, you know, the, uh, the whole, what really flipped me from, from conservative to where I, kind of the position that I stand now mm-hmm. is the uh, the Ed the Edward Snowden thing where it came out mm-hmm. that you know unwarranted <laughs> uh, uh, spying and you know the Patriot Act type stuff and that's what really flipped my like I was very I was pretty staunch in my view and then I seen that and I was just like wait a second like I've been being lied to yeah stuff. Yeah. And, and then and there's the proof, you know, yeah. and, and that was verifiable proof to me. And, and ever since then, it's just like, I fell down into the rabbit hole of just being very leery of everything and everyone, even if I like you as a person, I'm still going to be very leery of everything that you tell me because I don't know it for sure. Because then like I, I had a buddy, he posted something about, um, it was a video. I can't remember the, uh, what was the guy's name? Um, Chaz Chaziel's son or something like that. I can't remember the guy's name. I believe that's what the guy's name was. He posted something and and he said uh, it was a former Black Lives or Black Lives Matter uh movement guy and you know he's deep in the thing. And then I was just like I watched the video, it was a 15 minute long video, and he talked about a lot he talked a lot, the guy, he was a black guy, and he talked a lot about um, you know, the the movement being co opted. You know, the, 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 the initial Black Lives Matter movement being co-opted and he's never had anything. Up, he's never had anything to do with it, but he was, you know, a black activist. And that's where he's always stood at. And he and his message was essentially, you know, like the movement's been compromised. You know, it's it's co-opted. It's not what it is. You mm-hmm. know, they're using it to further their their political agendas and da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And, and he was essentially say. The where I broke it down the 15 minute video, he was essentially saying be leery of everything that you see about it, and then I was just like, okay, like uh, I can get with this message, I understand it, but then I was like, let me look into it a little bit because you know, my skeptical mind, um, I was just like, hmm, I was like, maybe it's right, maybe I'll, I'll look into it a little bit, and and all I did is I typed in the guy's name, and I found a I found a uh a screenshot of something that he made on Facebook saying I've never had anything to do with black lives matter. Or any of this, any of the movements that they, these, these videos say that I have been, I'm just an act. I'm just a black, a black activist. And I don't, and I don't subscribe to any of it, but it's, so, it's tainted my message. So they took his name and have spread it out there as this thing. Yeah. And, and, and of course he can't fight that because he doesn't have the platform to do so. Yeah. So like, that's where I'm like, the media is very on both sides. It's very like, like I'm very critical on, on both sides because like they both do it. Like, like you just said with the protesters, like they're like just, just a week ago, you know, the right wing was out there protesting and like, yeah, freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, protest. Yeah. Guns. Da, da, da. Let me be free. Let me go work. Mm-hmm. And now that there's another protest in opposition of it, and they're like, "Ah, oh, fuck these motherfuckers!" And these guys are doing this, and it's just like, mm-hmm. "Well, yes and no." Like, granted, the right the right side on the protest, those were very peaceful protests, even though some might say, you know, like, "Oh, they had guns, so they had to be peaceful," and you know, but that's well, not- people were claiming that wasn't peaceful. Yeah, there there was definitely a lot of people saying that they were terrorists, but mm-hmm. what you, what you didn't see is you didn't see. What you didn't, and, and this is where I say that the left needs to take this up when they're going out and protesting their 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 stuff. They mm-hmm. need to take up the realm, and this is where we're gonna feed it back into your 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 stance. Is they need to take up that mantle of the second Amend- second amendment because what happens is while you might have those agitators 
of, you know, in the media being like, oh, these guys are terrorist type things. Mm -hmm. The message still gets out there. Yeah. That's a because we can't all be terrorists. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and then eventually over time, I think that will be broken down that that barrier that they put between what's real and what's not real. Like mm -hmm. I, I, people on the podcast, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm holding my hands in, in, in far apart from each other to where our, our vision is here. This is, yeah. this is what they, this is the reality. And this is our, this is what they tell us. The more that we break down that barrier mm -hmm. and, and, and you already see it slipping in some, some aspects that why, oh, yeah. that, that's why media is so gun ho to, to paint, you know, people of, of the, of the other party, like the Trump supporters. I've, I've yep. met some very, you know, very dick bag Trump supporters that are very, you know, like, you know, like, you know, kind of on the borderline of being like weirdos type stuff. <laughs> And then I've met, I've met some really good people. Like I know a lot of Trump supporters. Hell, my father's a Trump supporter, mm -hmm. you know, and he's a good man at heart, but by, by seeing him talk about shit, you wouldn't realize it, you know, like, cause I wouldn't say he's as vocal as I am. You know, he's not out there on social media every day talking about shit, mm -hmm. but just in general, like they get that bad rap because they're like, you know, all oh, Trump supporters are racist and they're white supremacist and then neo Nazis and type <laughs> stuff. And it's just like, bro, that's not true. Like <laughs> it's not true. Like stop lying. Like, yeah. Well, you didn't know that I was a white supremacist. You oh, didn't yeah. know about that. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's, it's just weird. Like, and I see so many people do it both left and the right. And it's just like, it sickens me to no end because then, because then I have to be that guy and I'm just like, no, nah, like you're wrong. Like shut, shut up. Stop pushing that bullshit. There's, mm -hmm. there, there is, there really is good people on both sides. Correct. The and Correct. We just have a different way of trying to solve the same problem. That's yeah. really, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I just like, I don't know, man. I, I don't know how to, uh, like you said, I, I don't know how to reach people, but I stay steady talking. Which I think is the only way because, you know, they talk about people talking about planting seeds and then they eventually grow. Mm -hmm. That's, I think it's the best thing to do because if you don't see anything, then that seed does, never gets planted. They never get the idea of something outside their echo chamber and people mm -hmm. love echo chambers. I don't oh, know why. Um, yeah. I think they're really detrimental. Um, I, I've been seeing a lot of people posting because of the whole Black Lives Matter thing is so prominent right now. Again, they're like, oh, either like or love my status. And then like, I don't remember the exact words, but I, depending on which, which way you like the status, they're like, I, I got to clean up my friends list. And I'm like, yeah. you look stupid. You yeah. look really stupid. You look like a 12 year old kid right now, yeah. because how are you an adult in your twenties and thirties? You have children and you want people to understand you, but you're sitting here deleting people that you don't understand yourself. Mm. And you don't, you haven't even taken the time to understand them or ask them right. why they feel they, the way they feel. Because I guarantee if you go and ask, random people all over the country have they had what kind of experiences they've had with the police you're going to see a lot of people say they've had a bad experience you're going to see a lot of people say they've had a good experience mm -hmm. um very rarely are you going to see where people haven't had any experience with the police i just don't see it happening unless you don't drive at all or whatever yeah. but um so again you know it's about communicating if you don't talk to each other you're never going to really find out what's happening mm -hmm. you're your perspective of the same prism is not the whole prism. Mm -hmm. It's just one way of looking through it. Yeah. I, I had a, I had an incident happen the other day on Facebook. I made a post about, um, if you think, if you think that the looting and rioting and the destruction of people's private property is okay, give me your address so I can go there with a group of 30 angry people <laughs> and let me destroy everything that you own. Yeah. And I had a guy and I've known the I've known the guy's, we, we grew up as kids and he, uh, he essentially, he, he dropped, he, I give him, I give him a credit. Like he had the balls and he dropped his, he dropped his address in the comment section. And he says, he says, come on. He goes, and I'll kick your fucking ass. <laughs> and I go, oh, I, go, no. Friend, Chris. <laughs> I go, I go, no, 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 no. I go, you're not allowed to, you're supposed to take yeah. it. Yeah. And then he subscribed me to being the typical Republican type guy. And I go, bro, I go, I'm not a, I go, because you know, you see a lot of Republicans being, ah, oh, private property, don't touch people's private property the, you know, because I knew, I knew where he lined up politically. Okay. 
I I knew where he did just by his initial statement. I knew where he lined up at. Yep. Because it, it was being like I said, being able to read it, being able to read the room. I yep. knew exactly where he lined up at, so I played it. And I go, no, bro. I go, no. I go, what you guys say is these people who are getting their stuff destroyed are just supposed to take it lying down. You're, you're not able to react back. And mm -hmm. if you react back, I'm going to make sure these 30 people that, are, that I'm going to be coming with beat mm -hmm. you with bats and sticks and maybe Molotov cocktails and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then he, you know, threatened me a couple more times, you know, saying that he's going to find me out in public because we live in the same town. Oh, uh and, and I told him, I go, Hey, I go, I'm always out in town. If you want to, if you want to do the dance, we can do the dance. I don't like <laughs> fighting with people, but there's a certain realm of where you got to be like, no, nah, you, you got to stand your ground. Yeah. And, and what happened essentially what happened is he goes, I know you very well. I've known you for forever. I go, obviously you don't know me very well because if you knew me very well, you would know that this the 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 comment that the post at hand was all sarcasm mm -hmm. it was sarcasm and me purposely trying to go people into saying something weird like you did mm -hmm. to to be able to realize that hey you don't believe what you say that you're believing in yeah you don't believe it because you said if i come to your property you're gonna you're gonna attack me but in the same breath on on your post you're saying that these people aren't supposed to fight back. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a habit of doing that with people, trying to goat people purposely into things and then making them realize that, hey, well, I don't actually believe that because I'm going to defend my stuff. Yeah, and it, but we should do that. Yeah, we should do that. The funny thing is the guy the guy sent me a mess. He blocked me and then he blocked me because of something because I told I, I essentially called him. I go, you I go, you don't know me at all because if you knew me at all. I go, I think both Republicans and Democrats are weirdos and I don't subscribe. I don't subscribe to either side. And guess what? I go, I go, anybody who takes my shit or tries to destroy my shit is going to be dealt with. I go, just like you. Mm -hmm. and, and then that's where he blocked me. And then through another friend, a mutual friend, a mutual friend sent me a message the next day saying, Hey, this guy says he's sorry. Wow. And because and I think that he said that he's sorry because he realized that I caught him, and I do. Yeah, that. and he, he has it all over Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and I do I do that with friends from all sides, and I try to catch people, and I think it makes them question about what they actually believe in. Like when somebody comes at me about the Second Amendment, like you're not going to be able to catch me on it because I say this is what I believe in. You're not going to be able to catch me on it. And they'll be like, well, what about this? And I'm like, okay, no, no. Like when I said, I don't think people should be able to own nuclear bombs. I don't think people should be able to own missiles and rockets and shit like that. Like that's definitely not something that you want in the general hand, the public's hand. I understand. Yeah. That. Yeah. And as for like machine guns, automatic machine guns, you know, Tommy guns and stuff like that. People should be able to own it because we yeah. should be able to, to have, a somewhat a semblance of being able to fight back against that oppressive government type thing. Yes. Yeah. That was the purpose of the constitution. Yeah, that was the I don't understand why people try to fight it so much. It's like, why are you living here then? Yeah. And like, it's just like you, you're not, I always tell people you're not going to be able to catch me on it. And, and, and I've purposely, I purposely positioned myself in certain places to where people can't catch me on certain things. And most other things, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, like, you know, I'm very libertarian in my stance, you know, like, uh, you know, I'd say this, this is where I get a lot of grief from is, is abortion. I don't okay. believe in it. I don't believe in it. But if, if you as a person do that, I don't care because that's your life. I don't have any control over your life. The one, the one thing that I say is I don't want government involved in it. Okay. I, I don't want government involved in what you do in life. Same thing with marriage. I don't care if a gay man gets married. I don't care if a trans person gets married. Do your life, live your life, do your thing. I just don't want government involved in it. That's that. And then, and then it's funny. Those people will start defending government as yeah. soon as you say that. Yeah. And and then and then that's again that goes back to where I catch them. And I'm like, okay, so you want more government control over your life because you want government to control all this stuff. So essentially, you don't want the rights that you say that you want because you want good. You want the government to tell you. You want the government to give you that power when you already have that power as a person. 
you know and people are like oh that doesn't make any sense i'm like yeah, it makes perfect sense bro like look at it like if you take if you look back into the on our foundings at one point in time if say if i said oh you know hey hey princess i i love you i want to marry you let's go let's go down to the the local church and get married by the priest that's the way it was it, it was simple yeah it was simple or you just you didn't even go down to the priest you were just like hey we're married now we're husband and wife mm -hmm. and you tell people and then they respect it they recognize it and then you just move on to the next thing you move on to the next thing and but w like that goes back to the conditioning of government allows we've we've let government tell us everything that we can do down to being able to even build an extension onto our own home yes or get rainwater like we are yeah. not allowed to catch rainwater type stuff. Like, yeah, we're good fishing. What is this lunacy that we've, we've subscribed to ourselves? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we, Hey, we, we've been going for quite a while now. I think we're pushing over the two hour mark almost. <laughs> and um, I think it's, I think, I think that'd be a good place to stop. Um, if you have any further closing comments that you want to tell my audience, if you guys have sat there, and listen through this whole thing. And I know there's a couple of ride or die people of that, that will sit there. And I know there's about seven of you that uh, listen to everything that I say and listen to everything, no matter how long it is. So if you had seven people that you want to, you know, click, you know, and be like th this girl, you know, a, a good message to grab seven people. Hmm. I put you on the spot and I do this to everybody because I think it makes it the most genuine. Okay. Uh, if you had the chance to tell seven people, whether these people believe what you believe in or not believe in, what is that message that you could give people? And, and, and at the end of it, tell everybody where everybody can find you. And if they want to get involved with, you know, the second amendment and being able to um, organize uh, stuff like you do uh, in their, in their cities and in their towns, you know, maybe uh, tell some stuff to where that they might be able to link up with other people in that type of mindset. Okay. Um, so if I had to tell seven people something, I would say just do a better job listening to people who oppose you mm -hmm. and do a better job of communicating your feelings to them um, and, and try to set, frame the conversation in that way from the beginning like Steven Crowder does so that the, the topic can stay on focus and you guys can actually talk through the topic. Right. Um, and then as far as activism, um, I'm sure every state has different organizations that do things like that. So you might have to do some like looking online on Facebook. Um, but there's just get with an organization. Um, I work with two major organizations in town. I don't, um, I'm not with one particularly, um, because I don't want to be controlled. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want to be told I can't say this because I represent them. So right. I'm a free agent. And I think it's really the best way to move about it because then you can go to this event, that event, and you can cross the lines and have more conversation and more interaction and more connections without worrying about offending this person because you are a member of their group. Um, and then uh, you can find me on Facebook. I don't remember what my, my handle is on there right now. I think it's like pro two a girl or something, but I think it has some numbers on it. I can't remember. Um, but my, I'm on Twitter, but it's blocked right now until they release my account. It's pro two a girl, P R O the number two, a G I R L. I'm on Instagram also under pro two a girl. Um, and then on Facebook, I'm under princess Quavor. Um, I'm pretty easy to find. I'm sure Jason will probably post that, um, yeah. on the feed there. Yeah. Um, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this show. Uh, I think we had a very enlightening conversation. Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff. Um, and like, like she said, I will, uh, she will give me all her, all her links. That way I can put it down in the descriptions of wherever this thing's going to be heard. Um, when I do drop it, it's probably going to be on, I'm working with, I'm trying to get on Spotify right now. Uh, I screwed up. I, I was initially on Spotify, but I switched over to a different provider guys. So it's, I'm kind of working, trying to get that lined out, but it, it would definitely be on YouTube. It's going to be on Facebook, Twitter and everything like that. So guys, um, I'm going to have her links. And if you want to contact her to talk more to her about, you know, uh, 
Second Amendment type stuff and even just talk about shit in general. Um, I'm pretty sure she she's a, a pretty open person. We talked about a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, I appreciate you being here, Princess. I really do. Uh, thank you for the conversation. And anytime that you want to come back and uh, hang out and talk about stuff, uh, you're more than welcome. All you got to do is hit me up in the DM and be like, hey, let's talk about something. I got something I want to talk about. And right. I, I, and I really appreciate you uh, inviting me. Uh, you're the first person to invite me to do a podcast. And I've been saying that I want to do one. Yeah. But like I said, I'm so busy right now. So yeah. uh, I hard. need to start making excuses. It's yeah. Very, it's very hard. Like I, I've had, like uh, I told people that um, I, I contacted 13 people off the jump, you know, since I, since I started trying to change it up, like I'm going more audio based uh, and um, you know, it, it's a little bit different. Let me close this show out real quick. I, I can put the pieces together. Sure, go ahead. I, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And I thank you guys for stopping by and uh, remember that I can't do this shit. If you guys don't ride with me, I ride with you. If you ride with me, and uh, make sure you go out and check out www.jasonstatic.com. You can find all kinds of cool shit on there, merch. You guys know that I sell shit, you know, antiques, collectibles, all kinds of shit. Um, and that's how I'm able to do this stuff because the man and everybody else don't want me to be heard. And I'm not be I'm not able to be monetized by anything because I have a mouth on me. And everybody knows that. Much love, guys. I, pe I love you guys. Take care. And until the next one, peace out. Much love, guys. <laughs>